In this video, we're going to go over each of my kit setups, what I run in what situation, and why. The best way to support the channel is by becoming a member of the kit page where I link every single thing that I talk about on the channel and include discount codes for everything that I can. Huge thank you to the main channel sponsor, US Arms Co., as they have helped me build this channel in so many ways. They make fantastic weapons. Use code GUNMAN15 for 15% off their site. So the way I'm structuring this video is in three categories. Kit one will be my everyday carry and casual clothes. Clothing. Kit 2 will be what I generally wear and bring to the range. Not including the range bag, I'll make a separate video on that, but I will go in depth on the other things. And Kit 3 will be my battle ready setup, which is what you're seeing me LARP in right now. Starting with my everyday carry, I'm not going to go super in depth here because I did just make an EDC update, which you can check out on the channel, but I'll quickly run through what my day to day looks like. First off, my style is generally a loose fit, vans, white socks, and a pair of dickies, my EDC belt, and a t shirt. And when it's starts to get a little colder, I'll wear an oversized sweatshirt or something like that. I always wear the same watch, which is a classic G-Shock. I carry a light, my Benchmade shootout, my keys, my card holder, my 43X MOS, which generally is inside a black arch and trotta appendix carry setup. But occasionally I will carry my Glock 45 in a tier one concealed, also appendix carry. It's way more comfortable to carry my 43X, so that's generally my daily. So that's the everyday look. What I bring and wear to the range is usually totally different depending on how I plan to train, though I do think it's important to go to the range in your normal everyday clothes and practice firing from concealment as those are the fundamentals you're going to need to have in order to be more proficient in protecting innocent life in the real world. For my general range kit, this is what I'll wear starting with my shoes, which are usually either my 511 boots or my 511 shoes, depending on the season, regular socks, 511 pants, which are the ABR pro pants. Then I'll run either a core belt or my battle belt setup, depending on what I'm doing. I've been running 511 gear for the last couple years and I've really loved what they have to offer for the price, though I do know there are tons of great options out there, but I definitely like 511. For the top, I'll generally wear either a t-shirt or a long sleeve, and I'll occasionally train with a play carrier, which is either my T-Rex Arms AC-1 with HESCO L210s and a Haley Strategic Placard, or my fully kitted Ferro Concepts V5, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Generally, when I run drills at the range, I'll be running whatever rifle I want to train on. Here I have my ARX Light Fighter, which I have kitted out to be my go-to crap at the fan rifle setup. I do have a couple updates since this video came out. I switched over the stock for a Magpul SLS. I swapped the Unity Riser for a Sclare Works mount, which is way better in my opinion. I did switch the foregrip for a BCM to save on front end weight, and the suppressor is the Velos wrapped in a burn proof gear. I have the Sting IR thermal mounted with a flip mount, and the light is a Rain 3 from Cloud. I also switched out the safety for the Radiant Talon, and this has definitely become for sure my battle build. I'll always have a secondary on my hip, either in a suppressed or unsuppressed configuration. The secondary is almost always my Glock 45 with an X300U Turbo. And a couple updates to this Glock since I've last talked about it. I'm going to make a full video on this soon, but it's now running the X300U Turbo, the 6MOA Trijicon RMR. Shout out to Optics Planet for sending this and the light over. I do have a code for them. I'm also running Night Vision, Suppressor Height Sights, an SLR Magwell, Silencer Co. Threaded Barrel, and a Train With Purpose Trigger Shoe. I am also running Train With Purpose's new Mark two base plates, which I really like so far, and you can check those out. And I'll carry all this in either a T-Rex Arms Ragnarok or my Tier 1 Concealed Centurion. For my defense ammo, I am carrying Spear Gold Dot and Hornady Critical Defense 223 in all of my AR mags. This is my main sidearm, which is what I trust in even a battle kit, but I would occasionally run a SIG or whatever I feel like I need to refresh on. Now, my battle kit is by far the most intense setup I own. This is basically why I call myself a professional LARPer. Honestly, a lot of what I'm going to talk about here isn't necessarily important for the everyday person or even training in general, but I personally do feel like most of it does make sense for a real life crap hit the fan situation, which no, I'm not anticipating, but I'll personally be ready if it does happen. I also happen to own a gun channel, so getting a lot of this stuff just happened because of that. Starting at the boots, we have the 511 AT non-zip in Coyote, and these are by far my favorite tack boots I have ever owned. Extremely comfortable, great materials, just overall absolutely solid. I personally I opted for the non-waterproof version for these, and I also always purchase the wide feet option. I'm a huge fan. The multi-cam shirt and pants that I'm wearing are from UF Pro, and I've been wanting to make this video since shot of 2022, because after I met them and they sent over a set, I've been absolutely amazed with how excellent their product is. If you're looking for a high quality clothing and gear company, these guys are them. The pants have so many features which make them very versatile, such as side stretch panels, a lower back pad, which I 
find very comfortable while running a belt. The integrated underbelt, three different materials which are all super durable, and a built-in knee protection system. You have pockets everywhere and much more. They are absolutely phenomenal pants. Then moving up to the shirt where they use a lizard skin torso material which reinforces the material and makes it more abrasion resistant and it also dries out super quick. They also sewed in pads on the hips which make a huge difference when running a heavy belt. They also run pads on the shoulders which distribute the weight of your plate carrier more evenly. They have this super high collar which keeps your sling from rubbing on your skin and you have zippers that you can unzip here for better temperature control. Very well thought out design. I'm a huge fan of this shirt. Very comfortable and very well made. Moving along we have my gloves which are from Mechanics. Have loved these. Big fan of them. Then we have my helmet setup which I have to thank both hardhead veterans for sending it over and Optics Planet for helping me kit out. The helmet itself is hardhead veterans ATE bump which allows me to run the Peltor Comtac 6 Ear Pro which are connected via hardhead's low pro adapter kit. This Ear Pro is incredibly overkill and very nice so if you have the money I say yes you should get them but you can absolutely go a less expensive route and still be very happy. There's even a lot of people on the internet showing you how to take regular Ear Pro and adapting them for a helmet setup. The Low Pro Adapter Kit isn't my favorite option for running the Peltors, but it does allow me to stow the Ear Pro away when needed and gives a solid seal when they're in use. On the Ear Pro themselves, to manage the extra comms cables, I'm using Coffin Works Mod 1, which is designed specifically for the Peltor Ear Pro. I'll be doing more videos on helmet setup soon, so stay tuned for how I set up all of this in a later video. I don't have the mount yet because they're all out of stock, but in the future I will have the option to run my Sting IR from AGM connected to a Wilcox mount if I don't want to run it on my actual rifle. The ATE bump is a great option if you want something to run comms capable ear pro and possibly thermal or NVGs without carrying too much weight. Hardhead Veterans makes a great comfortable helmet that I can genuinely recommend for sure. I'm definitely going to be upgrading to the micro lattice helmet pads because I do have a hot spot with the current pads that the helmet comes with. It's not terrible but I think it's worth the upgrade anyway. My battle belt setup is fairly simple starting with the belt itself from Safe Life Defense. So far, huge fan of this belt. Very comfortable, very rigid, well made, and complete with Cobra Clips. Definitely can recommend. I haven't had a single issue running this thing. Starting out here, we have the S-Tac mid-length Kiwi pouch with the two-inch belt loop attachment, my fixed blade from Vero Engineering, an IFAC from Live the Creed, and a dump pouch from Predator Armor. And the Safari Land leg shroud, which I used to run all of my different holster setups, which usually is either one of my T-Rex arms for my suppress setups or the Centurion from Tier 1 Concealed, which has been my personal favorite level 2 retention holster I've run. The plate carrier, like I said before, is Ferro Concepts V5, and I threw on their padded shoulder straps. I added a 511 carabiner to hold my gloves. Then I've got two different placards I'll run. Either this one, which is the D3CR Micro, which holds just three mags in the front with the two pistol backups and a front pocket, which has a spare IFAC and a couple other things. Or I'll run the D3CRX Heavy, which holds four mags in front and has an extra pocket for a little bit better organization. I love both and I run both, but it really just depends on what I'm doing. Sitting under the placard, we do have a Haley hanger, which holds my other AGM thermal monocular. I personally believe you should always keep thermals on you. On the back here, we have the first layer, which is a back panel for my water supply. And the second layer is a spare storage, but I just keep three 20 round mags full of match grade rounds only to be replaced one day with hopefully some flashbangs. I'm going to upgrade one day to the assault cumber bun, but for now I'm running the carry elastic version. The plates that I'm running in here are actually Mira Safety's level fours, which have some great reviews on YouTube showing what they can handle. They aren't the lightest plates in the world, but they also aren't the most expensive. So I am running these and I can recommend them for now as a great level four option. In there with the plates, I do have a T-Rex arms plate backer set, which makes wearing plates way more enjoyable, even though it's not fun to begin with. And to finish off the carrier, I'm running a Y-strap adapter also from T-Rex arms. So that's it. This is the kit. As always, you can find everything linked on the kit page. Let me know if you have any questions on anything. The things that I'm running seem to be changing and updating as I research the new options out there. But what I'm running right now, I feel like I'll be running for a while, especially this camo from UF Pro and the 511 AT boots. I also really love my battle belt setup. I would say the plate carrier is probably what's going to be adjusted the most in the future. Not the plate carrier itself, because I do love this, but just the way that I configure it. So I'll make sure to keep you updated on what I do. For now, it's honestly great and it does everything I need it to, but I would just say it's a bit heavy and I want to make sure I'm not causing myself to be a liability. At the end of the day, I won't know what works and what doesn't.
doesn't if I don't train with it. So that's what I do. Make sure you go out and do the same so we can collectively become more proficient in protecting innocent life and defending our God-given liberties. I will see you in the next one.